So hey guys, um, I'm gonna be replacing the uh, thermal paste on this laptop, so I guess let's get to it. It's an Asus 5600 with RTX 3050 5600H, and it's also the studio line, and, with, and this is the model for the laptop. So yeah. I'm gonna replace it. Oh, it's all for MT and Asus kinda sucks anyway, so let's get do it, I guess. Through the wastelands, through the highways, until my shadow turns to sun rays. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> so one note about this screw is that once it's taken off, the thread locker, which is the blue color on the screw. The thread locker and blue color on the screw to ensure the screw stays on and doesn't fall off will be gone. So this is the thread locker. It's a kind of blue paste. So once you have it unscrewed, once it's gonna be loose, so it can fall out anytime. Make sure that you're always checking to ensure the screw is still secure when you're going around at places, taking it on off. So yeah. And so, also, or you can just like if you have thread locker glue you could just apply it yourself so that it won't, wouldn't fall out I don't so yeah so remember the length of the screw by the way they are all kind of different because ASUS is smart yeah I just use the wrong screw for this it doesn't come out hang it to come out. Jesus Christ. So this is the so this is the thread locker I'm talking about. You see the little blue paste here? So you need that to actually screw them properly. So with all the screws unscrewed, we can slowly pry open the laptop. So be careful as you have parts here. As you can see, this line here is the way you're gonna start prying it out. So we stop recording midway, I don't know why. 8 minutes seems to be the limit. That is a pretty big mistake on my part of not noticing it. So what the hell? I just pull away the cable so that well I don't need to take apart that. And then it seems to this need to take take away this as well. Right. Also, don't use metal or like life. It's still life actually. So use plastic. <laughs> All right. Then we're gonna continue with screwing this. My main reason for taking apart today is to replace the thermal paste. I'm hitting 90 plus degrees, just like even on normal task. So I'm surprised. So make sure you take it apart properly, you don't strip the screws or anything. They are quite like important. So put enough pressure and then just do it one try instead of stripping the screw. Though usually this heatsink versus the fan are separated, so we'll see if it's separated or not. Okay, with that they are all out, it should be able to come off. Alright, so it is. So from the look of things, two years, um, I would say a more than average use. It's crusty here, but the pad itself is not. Have I replaced the thermal base before actually? Seems like I did. But what is concerning is those 
as you can see those chips here are crusty I assume this is for the GPU this is the C RAM and then CPU GPU here so the GPU are real crusty and got well dust you can't tell if it's focused to dust This is the fan module. Just looks like this. This fan comes up pretty seamlessly. So yeah. Dust here is not the best, so we're gonna clean this. Okay, so while uh, outside cleaning, I'm done. So this is copper all clean. So it was actually crusty. Also funny thing, um, I was using this plastic to scrape but apparently it left some marks which is really surprising. Plastic is not supposed to be able to scrap copper, right? And you can't wipe away these two. So that is very weird. Well, putting that aside, I don't know what. Is this a fake copper that Asus used or whatever? Anyways, we clean this fan so it's good looking now. So. We're gonna replace the thermal paste and scrub away the crusty pad, uh, crusty stuff here. And then, boom, we'll apply the new thermal paste. For thermal paste wise, usually tissue paper are like the most effective way to just clean it. We're gonna bring it up to you guys. So this is in media chip, the AMD had nothing. Which is quite surprising. Crusty, so I'm just gonna bring the whole computer out and then scrape away. That'll be much easier. So see you guys real quick. Okay. So I scrape it, so it's all good now. Okay, so it stopped recording again. This is so annoying. Oh, I didn't realize that. Three. And then now we are just put this back. Adjust it properly before dropping. And then, boom. Make sure no cables is pressed wrongly. Okay. Now we screw that. You want to start cross diagonally to spread it evenly. Though, like, the normal way you would do this is actually to just screw diagonally but halfway, 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 halfway on all four sides and then you would re-screw them again to f finish, their, finish the screwing. So right now what I'm doing is kinda the opposite, I'm just screwing diagonally but fin finish it one go and now I'm just checking. Okay, so they are tightened so let's move on to this. Okay, so all of them, all four of them are fully screened. Now I'm just wondering why this has a little bounce. I might have bent it somewhere. Oh well. So I can like um, um, redo the bend now, so I hate myself. But it's fine. I think it's fine. I can just take it out and rebend, but um, that is a little bit too much effort for me, so I'm not gonna do that. It's just kind of uh, floating here. They are not meant to be like actually locked properly, so it just lays here. So any bend will cause it to be like this. But it's quite soft, so I'm not worried about it actually being an issue. But it does trigger my OCD to see it bounce like that. Though in camera it won't be obvious but you can see it's bouncing so and you can dust off this case if you see some dust so I'm gonna do that. If your case has a dust filter here you can dust off while doing that and just kinda go through the whole thing. And once your dust all done you can just cover back. Why is that thermal base here? What the hell? 
and no worries, all gone. And double check everything, screwed in, tighten, paper correct. And then okay, now everything is double checked. You can just close it. So it clips in by you pushing in from the sides and getting it to clip on the clips inside. So that's how you do it? Now we can just screw finish up, which is just basically screwing in. Switch to the star shaped screw and you can start screwing in. So usually I would like test boot the computer first. But since I'm doing this video, I'm just gonna screw everything in. So screw them tightly, as I say, they will literally fall out for some unknown reason. Just badly designed, is all I could say. I care, but I or at least screw them quite tightly so that it, even if you screw them tightly first, I'll let you know that it still might fall out. So you should always check up on it. And if you notice your screw is already missing, you could just probably look inside your laptop bag. You might find them just lying around inside somewhere because it fell out. So don't panic. I think you can just get this screw like from online, so don't worry about them too much. But make sure you screw them properly when you do this. Okay, so now our screw in. You can test the laptop now. Turn it on. So the screen is booting up. You guys can see better with the screen like this, so I'm gonna do it like that. Okay. I got a fingerprint so it's auto logging in, so no worries on that. I'm gonna turn up the brightness for you guys. All is good guys, all is good. So everything works. So we're gonna check the temperature now. Let's just run lively wallpaper. Seems it seems to be quite intensive on the computer itself, which is quite funny. I'm gonna put hardware in for the pop out sensor, yep. And we're gonna run this wallpaper that I have. It's not even that intensive, but it should push in a little. So previously, so previously the T die is reporting over 90, but now it seems to be doing quite well. I'm really happy, but the true test is actually plugging in. Because when I plug it in, it will run a lot hotter, so let's just plug it in. And the temperature might rise now, so let's just check. Because when I plug it in, it, it will use more power. And then, the best way is to rerun CSGO. It, it hits 90 just now, so I'm gonna run CS right now. The frames was about not activated yet. Okay, so CS, CS is activated, so it's now using 90. To benchmark it. So right now, we're, yep, we already hit 90, which is normal for a laptop. I just want to see if it's cooler. Plus the turn-on pace kind of dry anyway, so it's fine. Right, so I'm gonna leave it, run, and I'll catch you guys later. So let's just check my gallery. Previous one was 96. So increase of a few FPS. Okay, I've been yapping, but anyways, my point is so for GPU temperature, the max was 74.5. For this, the previous before replacing is 82.7. So that's a difference for about 8 degrees. 7 to 8 degrees. Good. Hotspot 80.7, 80 
now and the previous was 91.8 so that's a difference of over 10 degrees which is really good so we eliminated the hotspot which is I guess makes sense because it was literally dry the memory chip was dry I just want to see the megahertz ran ran about the same 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 so the temperature improved quite a lot so let's move on to the CPU CPU here so the maximum was 95.4 and the previous was 96 so a little improve or about 0 0.5 degrees it's fine an improvement is an improvement plus that is right pace just now so no matter how you see it, it's still a better way to pace it properly and look at this 93 now uh, we hit 90 on core 5 Previous now we're only hitting 88 so generally if we look at every set here versus here an improvement about 1 to 2 degrees which is still a good thing so yeah that's the thermal replace and that's all for today's video bye bye the videos keep cutting out i hate the xiaomi limit fuck xiaomi